Hey, it's Dora with Tactical Hive. Today's video, it's all about facing movements, all right? Facing movements are a great way to begin to bring your lower body into the fight. So stay tuned and we'll get into it. All right guys, so we're back. And like I said before, it's all about facing movements. Facing movements are a drill designed to help you set you up for success in the event you get surprised or you notice something that could is or possibly could be very dangerous to you and your friends. So what do I mean by that? Um, you're walking along, I'm on the street, on the trail, whatever it is, maybe you're at a patrol ready, maybe you're checked up, but you're not ready, ready, all the way ready for a fight. You are ready for a fight, but you don't exactly have anybody to fight yet. So you're just kind of standing by in a maybe non-permissive environment, if that makes sense. So in order to set the drill up, there's 90 and 180 turns. So we'll start with 90. You'll go ahead, get lined up with your target. Uh, the target is now off to my left because I'm facing you guys. And I'll go ahead and just get to the patrol ready. So you're just walking along, you're down here at patrol ready, and you hear something. So what happens when you hear something? You look. Once I look and lock on to my target, I am not going to look away. You, once you find something that is dangerous, you need to keep track of it. Because if you don't, you will lose it. It's still dangerous, it's still out there, but we can't engage what we can't see. Or at least if we don't know where they are, if that makes sense. So I'm walking along, I hear something, I snap over, I see it, and from here, I'm going to pivot on my foot closest to the threat. Doesn't matter where, where I'm at with my walk, if I'm kitty wampus or a little bit off, it doesn't matter. The closest distance to me and the target is a straight line, so I'm just gonna line up on it as straight as I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're reacting to contact at this point. So I'm walking along, I'm at low ready, I lock on, I pivot with my inside foot, and I come straight and engage from the low ready. We covered low ready in the previous video, all we're doing is adding in the turn. These are generally done static. You don't need to be walking, though if you're by yourself, I'm in a class, it's kind of hard to facilitate walking, but if you're by yourself, you could start off static, then go with the walk from there. It really just depends on you and what you're comfortable with. So again, just starting out from a static position, I'm just gonna be standing here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna be kind of at the patrol ready. I'm not, you know, I'm not ready, ready for the fight yet but I hear something off to my left. So again, I look, lock onto the target, and I'm going to pivot on my inside leg. My inside leg is not going to leave the ground if I can help it. Why? Because I need to be as sturdy and stable as possible to take those accurate shots. And if the situation is dire enough, if it is that much of an emergency, desperate times call for desperate measures, and I may inevitably have to take shots unsupported on one leg with the weapon not fully in my shoulder yet. That does happen, that can happen. The world is full of unknown and terror and you gotta be ready for it. Now I don't train for that. I try to do every rep exactly the way it's supposed to be done. I try to have those reps of perfect practice. But if I have to deviate that in the heat of the moment, I'm setting myself up for success. And that is why I'm gonna do my very best to keep at least one foot firmly planted on the ground. And it's for that emergency stability. So again, I'm gonna go ahead just from a static position. I'm gonna be at the low ready. If there was a bunch of guys in line in front of me, maybe behind me, everybody would be at the true low ready. That way we're not flagging each other's legs as we turn. It's another thing you need to be very careful of. If you're training in a safe environment, there's no reason to skip safety steps. So. As I'm turning, I'm gonna make sure my weapon stays at truly low port, low ready, and I'm not going to cheat. I'm here by myself, so it's not a big deal. If I shoot the camera, you know, it's just expensive. I'm not gonna hurt anybody, all right? So even when filming, you know, you don't wanna bald win anybody, right? So you wanna make sure every rep, you're doing it right. You're at truly low ready. So I'll go ahead, lock onto my target, pivot, and take shots. I'm going to know my holds based on the distance and proximity to threat, and I'm going to go ahead and just send two. 
I'd like to say I had two sight pictures, but honestly, when you get surprised like that, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of adrenaline. It's all, honestly, it's, it's muscle memory, and uh, that first sight picture better be a good one. Just saying. Now, as far as training goes, what I said before is I'm going to try to get those two. I am, I'm gonna get those two sight pictures. I'm gonna do everything deliberate. I'm not gonna be in a hurry. I'm gonna make sure that my technique is good to go. And that way, if this you know, comes in handy in real life, the reps, attition, the reps, the repetition, everything that I did here on the flat range will hopefully carry over into a real life application. That's just a static way of doing it. Um, it can be done from the low ready or the high ready. For whatever reason, if I was in high ready, I saw something, I go ahead, lock onto it, pivot and take shots. All right guys, so in the real world, we have a left and a right side, so you need to be able to turn into both. They're very, very similar but depending on which side of your body your weapon's on, it, 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 there are some slight differences. Um, again, so just walking, you know, patrol ready, ready to go. You see something off to the right, snap over, look at it. I immediately turn and send it. For the sake of the drill, I'm gonna go slow enough to try to get those two separate sight pictures, try to tighten up those rounds um, to acceptable training spread. Rule of thumb for training is generally in real life, your groups are gonna double in size, you know, so you try to keep them four to six inches because in real life, you know, you're still gonna be getting hits at that point, you know, and if you can go for one or two inch groups, even better, even better, tighter the better. All right, guys, so obviously being able to already be facing the target is kind of a prerequisite for this training, but uh, we've covered left and right turns. They're about the same. There are some slight differences, but not really. You can do it from the high ready, you can do it from the low ready, you can do it from whatever position you want. Yeah, it's, really, it's really up to you. But uh, things also have a tendency to come at us from behind. So obviously we need to cover the full 180 turn. There's a couple different ways to do this. Um, again, a lot of this stuff just kind of comes back to body type preference of what you're comfortable with. Um, I suggest, you know, trying out different methods, different ways of doing stuff and, you know, picking which what works best for you. If the there's something behind me, say I'm at patrol ready. I'm gonna go ahead and whichever way my head turns, so if the sound is slightly over on this side, I'm probably gonna turn this way. This is the way I'm turning my head. This is the way I'm gonna turn my body. So I'm gonna pivot on this foot. This foot's not gonna leave the ground. If this is the only stable anchor point I get when I have to start taking shots, so be it. I'm gonna set myself up for success as best I can. Now, for the sake of the drill, I'm not gonna take unsupported uh, one-legged shots, but in the event I needed to doubt later on in life, I will. It's as simple as that. So I'm going ahead, I'm at patrol ready. I go ahead, I hear something, I lock onto it, I pivot, and I take shots. I'm not going to start bringing the weapon system up and flagging the hell out of everything over here. Why? Because it's dangerous. So in a safe and sane one-way range environment, I'm, muzzle discipline is going to continue to be very, very important. And if I'm out and about someday, once again, in a place that arguably shouldn't be, you know, maybe I'll skip steps then, but I'm definitely not going to now in training because it's just dangerous. And then for whatever reason, if I, I hear something off to my left, I'm gonna go ahead and turn left, and then I'm gonna freaking turn my body left. Just like so. This could also be done from the high ready, whatever. I'm checked up, something catches my attention. What was that? Just like so. I'm gonna try to always plant that second foot to make myself as stable and accurate as possible before I take shots. And like I've said before, if the situation dictates I've gotta get ahead of myself and be a little bit faster than, than accurate, then so be it. That just kind of happens in real life. All right guys, so in conclusion, these facing movement drills are just that, they're drills. And they're, and they're designed to take the beginner shooter who's you know started their journey, started their tactical training and kind of bridge the gap between static standing still training and dynamic running around training. At Tactical Hive, you know, we have uh, three levels of pistol carbine training, you know, with the static stuff. Obviously level two is dynamic. This is an intro to that. 
Uh, there's much, much more that goes into it. And then level three stuff is uh, more environment-based. Structures, vehicles, entering, exiting, you know, close quarter stuff. All right, guys, I hope you like our video on facing movements, you know, just an idea to help uh, get you to the next level of training. If you, if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like, hit that bell to get notified because we're pumping out content uh, about as fast as anybody ever has, I think. So you don't want to miss out. Anyway, this is Dorm with Tactical Hive, out.